Hey, you've got to watch this show tonight. It's absolutely brilliant. We've got a fella comes on, does the splits on a blow lamp. He's excellent. <laughs> absolutely super. Then he seems to get balls of fire. Absolutely marvellous. <laughs> My wife's into that oral sex now, you know. She turns her back on me and talks me out of it. I was, uh, I was saying before, it's funny, you know. I'm telling you, people laugh about this. You can't tell stories about what you want in the morning. You can't do it. It's funny how, you've, how we've gotten out to the stage where we've got sensitive about... about doing gags now. We've got a lot of people in, dear friends of mine, the Crankies, and you'll see them all later on. And we worked the clubs together when, when we could tell stories about what we wanted to tell. We, th there were no do-gooders and the Save the Ferret in Mansfield Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could go on and tell gags, you know. Now it's all, you can't tell, you can't tell stories, racist gags, you can't do any of that now. Which means you can't tell stories about a Scotsman, because a Scot is a member of a very proud race. There's a gorgeous story about the Scotsman got up to heaven, he knocked on the gates of heaven, St Peter answered, he said, who's that? He said, it's Angus McTavish. St Peter said, you can piss off, we're not making porridge for one. <laughs> now, you see, there's, there's nothing offensive about that, is there? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> see, the Welsh, have any Welsh people in? I can't stand the bastards, the Welsh. <laughs> but more than five, you've got a pissing choir on your hands, haven't you? <laughs> see, it's all good nature, we don't mean it, we don't mean to offend. I think Jewish men, for instance, are very arrogant. If you think about it, they have a bit cut off before they know how big it's going to be. I think that's terrible. No skin off my nose, I just thought I'd mention it. But it's going to be a good night. You are going to see famous faces do some quite horrendous, quite horrendous things. And they do them, half of them unwittingly, some deliberately, in his case, unknowingly. <laughs> With, there are... There are takes I promise you, you've never seen. You've never seen any of them. And I was privy to see them about a fortnight ago, and, and I promise you, you are in for some, some laughs. We're going to ask you to, to assist us in the making of the programme in the, one or two little things, like we'd like the girls just to do some, one or two little tricks with objects we've got. <laughs> later on. But we will help you with that. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna, we're going to make a video of it, and uh, we'll make a few bobs or bollocks to you. Now, um, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Any questions? <laughs> I'm just going to move away from here now because I'm getting, getting quite close. Um, we'll, we'll get the word from the director when, when we're going to go for it. Um, once again, enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy the clips. Please, please feel free to laugh if, if, you know, if you think it's funny. <laughs> for fuck's sake, laugh. Um, Otherwise, we've all worked the bollocks off for nothing at all. <laughs> you know, we're just going to feel complete dickhead. Um, There's a pert fart. A squirt fart. That's fucked up another clean shirt fart. <laughs> <laughs> we don't fart. Women don't fart, do they? <laughs> they break wind. Don't they break wind, don't they? And you can tell when they're going to do one, because a little smile that they come. <laughs> and then they go... <laughs> and then they walk away and let the husband take the blame for it, don't they? That's all they do. I'm, te I'm telling you, it's absolutely true. Us lads, we don't. We fart, it's a skill with us. <laughs> you say, go on, do us a good one, put your trousers. That's a good one. It's like when you go to the loo, see? Ladies, when you go to the loo, no decisions, into the toilet, cubicle. No problem. Into the cubicle, bolt the door, three hours of lager, bag of nuts, sit down. <laughs> no if you walk out, if there's a queue, they just say, it was her in that one. <laughs> When we go to the gents, different ball game. When we go to the gents, we go to the gents. After we go in there, we're not allowed in the cubicles unless we mean it. <laughs> it's got to be a proper sit-down job. Oh, yeah. If we're going for a tinkle, we've got to use the porcelain slab with the partitions. And what we do after three or four pints... But girls, you're going to learn something now. We walk in, don't we? Jim, 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 And we stand there, don't we? Feet astride. <laughs> Head on the chrome pipe. <laughs> Trying to get the embassy tip down the griddle. Come on. <laughs> and we always cover them up, don't we? And sometimes when it's busy, we tend to peep over. <laughs> Just to see what division we're in, you know. <laughs> and got so confident. And I was in the gents this night, this fellow walked in, massive, huge fellow walked in, six foot nineteen, metric, never been bricked. He stood there and I thought, what a big fella. And I wondered about the size of his, you know. I thought, I'll look at his shoes, because that's a fair indication, you know, about it. My feet are a bit cramped in these shoes tonight. <laughs> I, uh... And as I went up and I just got to his neck, and as I got to his neck, all the wrinkles went out of his neck. And he lurched forward. I thought, uh, something's caused that. There's been a shift of weight. 
So I, I thought I'll peep over and I peeped over there. And when I saw it, I think, oh, dear me. I, oh, I thought he'd get Sky BSB on that. So, <laughs> and he caught me looking. He said, what are you doing? I went... <laughs> I said, you're a big lad. He said, how do you mean? And I'm thinking now, I thought, Christ, what's he going to do? I said, well, you've got four fingers round it. He said, well, you've got four fingers round yours. I said, I know, but I'm pissing on three of them. I told him. <laughs> so I didn't want any trouble. I didn't want any trouble. You can't have any trouble, can you? Do you want to blow your nose now? Do you want to blow your nose now before we go any further? Because if, if you do that when we start, you're in the... Who did that? When you do that, they go up and down when you laugh like that. Bloody grand, them. The wives were like that, but the kids ate them. Who are you? Who are you? You don't get any of this on Bullseye, will you? You don't get any of this, do you? Eh? <laughs> See? No, he's upset. All you get on Bullseye is a pissing speedboat, isn't it? Have you noticed? That's a lot of good to somebody who lives in Walsall on a council estate, isn't it? <laughs> 150 miles to the nearest pissing beach and you've got a speedboat rotting your lawn, haven't you? And every morning you get so hard, I won that on Bullseye. Bloody great, isn't it? And the, bloody... the lawn's rotten, the ground's died, you can't see out the fucking wind and there's a speedboat there. <laughs> People say to us, what happens if two people are totally unrelated and they, and they win, say, a speedboat? What happens? Is it just the one speedboat? What happens? And they say, fuck them, let this sort it out. <laughs> we didn't ask them to come on the show. <laughs> I don't know where they watched the last series. Next to the last show, did you watch the one where they gambled all the nine prizes and they lost everything? Did you see that one? <laughs> uh, greedy bastards. I think that's all. People ask us, you know, they say, how do you feel when people gamble and lose everything? I say, we try not to fucking piss ourselves, because we, we shouldn't do it. When you've got those prizes, you take them home. They're very valuable. Got little dents in them, the boxes. <laughs> um, now, just get yourselves relaxed on this, girls. If, you, if you're sensitive about it, I should just... Uh, don't be sensitive anymore, because it does get progressively worse. It really does. So you just resign yourself to it. It's just going to be one big fuck-up. <laughs> A celebration of, of mistakes, really. It's a celebration of cock ups. <laughs> it's a celebration where we're going to show you gorgeous gaffes, mystical myths, um, <laughs> <laughs> we think you're going to enjoy the show. There's a lot here for you to see because it's all about mistakes. And life, there's nothing funnier than a mistake, provided no one gets hurt. And most of us in this business are privileged to make mistakes and not really get hurt. Perhaps the pride gets dented a little bit, but that's all. And the public quite enjoy seeing us with egg on, egg on our faces now and again. And you're going to be faintly embarrassed, but we think in a rather friendly way. A lot of people here tonight, we've got large parties in. We've got a large party in from Wigan. How are you, madam? Nice to see you. Back <laughs> on seats three, four and five. Lovely to see you. We've got a JCB to get you down afterwards. It won't be a problem. We can sort it out. We also have a party in from Tipton. Where are the Tipton people? Thank you very much indeed. The people from Tipton, this is, of course, electricity, and that is carpet. <laughs> <laughs> this is the set for the programme, and what a celebration. I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely... It's MFI, this. <laughs> this came to us as a greenhouse this morning. <laughs> it's, it's, it's flock wallpaper. It's wood chip. Wood chip. It's like on your bedroom ceiling, Rusty. You know. <laughs> you remember when we looked at it together the other morning? You remember? And you took me mind off it. And, and there, that'll take you back down memory lane, won't it? You see, look at that. Crossroads Motel. That takes you back a lot of years. I tell you, would Bob Monkhouse live with a set like this? Would he? 
I promise you. Now, there is a, pro a professional, isn't there? <laughs> eh? He never makes mistakes, does he? Never makes mistakes. Watch this. Why should a 62-year-old housewife who lists among her hobbies whist, flower arranging and oil painting have as her hero one of the great nautical figures of the 18th century? I think it's the 19th century, Bob. I think you're right, Bob. <laughs> but you got that wrong, didn't you, Bob? Yes, I did. So I had to cut this bit out. How will we make sure they cut it out? Well, I'm say bollocks, all right, I will. <laughs> it's probably... Yeah. Here we go. It's probably my ass... ass to shit. <laughs> Sue Barker, what is the benefit Sue of... Baker, sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh, God, I knew I'd be out sooner or later. It's all right, Phil, I'm Nick Richard. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Mickey. Great. Here, here. Uh, have you heard the one about... The strawberry jelly and the bowler hat? No. Yes. <laughs> Usual, young lady. Of course. <laughs> Never had what? Chew blades. Chew blades? Oh, I've got a crop of them. Uh, my feet are light and what I'm talking. <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. I thought you might. I feel sorry for them poor boys in the middle of the North Sea making them oil rugs. <laughs> the makers for the oil rugs? Yes! What are we talking? Shall we just go back a little bit? <laughs> I was making custard sitting in the kitchen. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a five-part question which will require five correct answers. Should you wish to piss? Should you wish to piss? <laughs> <laughs> Stand a man. Even his outtakes are perfect. I mean, what's he doing? He's supposed to be here. Shopping, he's out shopping, you tell me. What's he doing? Bob, 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 what are you doing here? Oh, what, what are you doing here? Well, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm supposed to be on your show. Well, that's but, what I'm looking for. Yes, I'm just, I, I never normally mock Miss Dukes, but I, I had to do the shopping. Jackie said, go and get the week shopping. And is that the sum total? Is that it? No, I lost the shopping list, you see, Jim. Yeah, I forgot. Oh, yeah, only th I remember this, though. <laughs> <laughs> All you remembered on the shopping list was the fact that it turned on. You know my motto, Jim. Never make mistakes, right. prevent them. Ha ha ha. that's there. That's really well. Now, don't you think you're a smart man? I'm the guy who's presenting this program. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm the man who never makes mistakes. Oh, is that right? That's right. You're the man who never makes I'm mistakes. I'm the man who never makes mistakes. <laughs> Jim, you may have had that reputation up until now. Yes. But get a load of this. Roll them, John. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> that's another catchphrase, isn't it? <laughs> We've got Ray Farrell here from Belfast. He's been on the game tonight. How many did you score for? I can't throw. <laughs> well, I'll be fair, I'm allowed to get it wrong once. Well, since Bob is still occupied, I'll have to carry on with you lot. Now, I was told that we had a celebrity audience gathered here tonight for this celebration, but at the moment, I've got to say, I can't really recognise anyone Anyone out there? So I'm just going to have a look round and see what, uh, see what we've got. We've got to uh, seem to... Who are you? you jo... Hi, I'm John Handley. John Handley? Up, it's the glasses, didn't he? You see? Stand up, take yeah, a bow. Ladies and gentlemen, John Handley. Please give a round of applause. Thank you, John. Thank you. Very nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for taking the trouble to come down and see you. And this is your good lady. It's, yes, yes and very nice, yes. It's um, not the same bird he had the other night, isn't <laughs> it? He's lovely. You, I bet you've flattened some grass round walls all haven't you? Time. <laughs> lovely to see you. And you, sir, are you in the, um, are you in the business? Well, oh, yes, yes, I am. You are? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I... Are you, um... I've fallen asleep. Are you... <laughs> 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 sir, uh, uh, what's, what's your name? It's uh, Leslie. 
Leslie. Yeah. And, and your second Is that name? all right? Well, second name, Leslie? No. <laughs> second name? I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, Phillips. 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 Is that one L or two, is it? Uh, four. Four. <laughs> it's two in Leslie. And... <laughs> I've never heard of the man. Never heard of the man. Let's get on with it. Another area of danger in our business is props. All things that we handle in the course of making a film or telling a story or doing an act. So well, I'm just going to show you now what the sort of thing that can happen you know, when you do um, when you deal with props. <laughs> that... You see now we're sitting here. Have, have you got a cup of tea, Ant? Is there any chance of a cup of tea? Yeah. Thanks very much indeed. Now this will show you what happens when we try to be clever. Sure, we had the saucer glued to the cup to show what can go wrong with props. Only, it all got a little hot under the lights. It's not fucking stuck to the thing, this, is <laughs> Anyway, that's fine. So we'll leave it. And sometimes, the phone rings when it shouldn't. So all you do is pick the phone up. And answer it. Now this... <laughs> this... <laughs> this... This is a briefcase. <laughs> Nothing complicated about this. Open. Closed. How can that... How can that make a man lose all sense of reason? He's opening this case. Well, I start again. That uh, closed it. <laughs> uh, I would not be so ruthless. No, you probably let them finish their soup first. <laughs> uh, perhaps uh, you would like to freshen up. Stop <laughs> well, it's really nice of you to bring this present, Ryan. It's uh, a jar of pickled eggs. Oh, uh, thank you, me teeth. Please, Trev, they're beautiful. He's just beautiful. Now, there's something you should know here. That was take nine. Once more, please, Tim. <laughs> Don't you take that tone of voice with me. Then we've got savings for Christmas and things. I was going to buy a saint like... Oh, for goodness sake! <laughs> Brian may know all these fascinating bits of wonderful info, but I bet there's something I can do that he can't. Oh, yeah, what's that? I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I can't do that either. You can. I can't. You can, you can. I can't, I can't. You can, you can. <laughs> I'm here to promote my new, my, my new album. And the first track on the album, it's a... It's a sort of... Sort of a... <laughs> it's, a it's a song first recorded by Richard Harris. <laughs> Super smashing great. Nice to see you all. Now, we move on now, and... Uh, um, 
<laughs> what do we do next? Don't let you forget your words. Oh, the dryer. Yeah, the next bit we're doing is it's called drying up. <laughs> you know, forgetting where you are. Doesn't happen to me, of course. <laughs> Here we are, back, a new series of Bullseye. We've got a great audience tonight. We've just trained them in that massive shout we have in the middle, you know. And just listen to this, because we've really got them together. What does the Bullseye get if he hits the dart player? Bollocks, I've got it wrong. <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Stop that laughing, that. I don't want any of that. I'm a cult, you know. <laughs> you have to be careful how you say that when you've had a drink or two as well, I promise you. They told me they wouldn't do this to me. Now, it's not being fair, and I don't swear either. That's another thing. I want to make that abundantly clear. <laughs> or at the rehearsals. But this one, she does. Deary me, that's desperate. <laughs> it is bloody desperate and all. <laughs> well, it always is, isn't it? Who does failed? Excuse me, my brain's gone. Ah. <laughs> Do you like it? Do you like it? You hate it. Don't feel bad about it, Charlie. We've been working on this for hours. I'm oh, sorry, I looked in the camera. <laughs> Hi. <Yeah>. Hello. <laughs> This is an original tune I wrote myself for my international tour of peace camps. Which is going to give Maggie something to put in Mr Reagan's pipe and smoke it, that's for sure. Yes. It goes like this. How does it go? <laughs> Cinderella! Cinderella! Father, I'm here! I'm here! Oh. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I was worried. Are you, uh, are you uh, all right? Father, yes, I'm, I'm... Oh, shit. Oh, you're not? <laughs> oh, dear. When did this happen? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're coming through the door today. <laughs> Do you feel like a jump? <laughs> I feel like a jump. <laughs> this is a door. I ask you, how could a door possibly make life difficult for anyone in our business? Have a look at this. <laughs> Hello, doggy, doggy, do. I'm just getting my coat. If I could talk to the animal. <laughs> So we toddle on our way and sing a merry song. <laughs> Mr. Tripp's wife, she's going back to stay the night. But with Mr. Tripp, of course, she left this. Ah. Oh. <laughs> As you're one of the loudest voices urging this campaign in the first place, couldn't you give me just a comment, Councillor? No, nothing that I may have said either in the council chamber or privately. <laughs> the bloody house is falling down. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> oh, God! Oh, it always works in the movies. <laughs> Paul? I'm Paul. Yes, bye. <laughs> Sorry, who are you? How can working with the door make you forget someone's name? Unbelievable. Anyway, this is, this is shut now. This is, have you got something? Can I open this door? Right really messing me about. <laughs> I think I'm crackers, don't you? There we go. There, see? It's so easy, mate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Never thought about that. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Isn't it amazing how a round of applause makes something work when it's crap? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Have you got any family? Yes, I do. How many? Two. Yeah. Get on well with them. 
Yes, very no well. Problem. Yes, very well. They do say, don't they, that never work with children, but it's all right if you're a mum, isn't it? That's right, yes. Yeah. What about you? What about animals? Do you have any animals? Uh, no, I haven't. You don't have any animals? No, I don't. How would you get on if you thought you had? Um. How would you get on if you thought you had? <laughs> <laughs> How, if you had... I mean, do you get on with animals? I mean, would you have one in your house? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Because they do say, don't they, never work with animals or children, don't they? They do. <laughs> Honest. They do. In our business, it's, it's, it's a disaster if we work with animals or children. But this will surprise you. Uh, this one is the one. <laughs> Go for it, Colin! <laughs> Don't you worry, kid. We're going to get you out of there. I got a lawyer working on your case around the clock. I can't remember what to say next. <laughs> Olivia, listen, if I bring Joseph over, will you look after him for a couple of hours? Hello? Olivia, listen, look. I'm trying to change a bloody nothing. <laughs> now, this time, just keep a close eye on the baby. Ash. a lot of, of wild creatures brought in from very common jackdaws and crows and pigeons to the less common owls, barn owls, tawny owls, and owls. <laughs> 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 just produced a pellet for us. <laughs> Open this door! Never! Open it, I say! Go away! <laughs> 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 That panto horse, funny or what? I promise you, bear with us, you've not seen the last of that. Follow me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce you to Titch, one of the world's most famous dogs? There we are. Now, Titch has appeared in movies, she's appeared in Woof, she's appeared in children's series. That dog now will do anything at all I wanted to do. Stand. <laughs> a bit quicker than that, if you could. Stand. Beg. Anyway. Bollocks to dogs. We had the grand opening of the video hydro rocket this morning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, Eleanor, that's not going to help him. What can we do, Miss Holden? He's afraid and he doesn't understand and he's going for a walk. <laughs> what would you say if I said to you... Sorry. What would you say if I said to you... Are we taping this on tape as well? Bastards. <laughs> now we know what children's presenters are really like, don't we? Let me speak to two of my best friends. How are you both? Hey, nice to you. see you, the crankies. You are... Uh, yes? Thank you for coming. Of course. You've really laid your career on the line now, because, uh, <laughs> as children's entertainers, we'd like you just to have a look at this. Right. Are you ready for this? <laughs> Oh, oh, this is a programme I've been waiting for. Short out. Oh, short out. <laughs> oh, great. Hey, this is a programme I've been waiting for. Free time show pan. Oh, shit. <laughs> Such an extravaganza. Ah, great. This is a programme I've been waiting for. Free time, showtime extravaganza. Oh, circus extravaganza. Oh. 
Oh, great. This is the programme I've been waiting for. Free time shots. Oh, sh <laughs> <laughs> now, this next bit you will see I've started now. Just go back a bit. Let me go on this, otherwise we're going to be here all night. So, let me just go. Now, this next bit you love. You've heard of the word corpse. No, no, not our floor manager, Anthony. It's the expression we use in the business to mean falling about laughing because we've been distracted or something falls over. Something to knock us off course a bit. You know where the expression comes from, don't you? It comes from the theatre. People playing a dead body. The corpse on the stage. You know, they get a fit of the... <laughs> they get a fit of the giggles, you know. <laughs> What I took was pin money compared to what I was entitled to. Mm. What, grievous bodily arm? Oh, no, he didn't see himself as violent. He thought he was passionate. <laughs> <laughs> the jacket's in the coleslaw. <laughs> oh, good. He's all right. Oh, my God! Oh, Mrs. Dawkins! What are we going to do? Crease. <laughs> That's not right. I can't talk. I give her all this and she just throws it back in my face. Oh, no, it's pathetic. She uses it just like wild and fun. <laughs> if that's what it's going to take to get... <laughs> what the fuck is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, the director would have said cut, but Timothy Spall, not hearing anything and being the true professional he is, carries on. But how long can he keep this up? He's, go he's going. He's, de he's definitely going. Yes, he's gone. <laughs> We could just go on lying here. <laughs> she trusts you. She respects your opinion. I'll pay you a hundred pounds. Go on. <laughs> she trusts. You. She respects your opinion. I'll pay you a thousand pounds. How much? <laughs> One thousand pounds. Honor Blackman was having a sale. What was she selling? Now, you remember that pantomime horse earlier on? <laughs> well, it gets better. Watch this. <laughs> Open this door! Never! Open it, I say! Go away! You are coming with me. Never! You insult me. You dare insult the seventh son of a seventh son? I will not take no for an answer. Come! Oh, no. You've won a deep freezer, colour television and two kiddies' bicycles, but have a look at what you could have won. <laughs> <laughs> you
You sure this program's not taking the piss out of me? <laughs> Hang on a minute, Anthony. You're having, you're having a go now. You're having a go now. It says on my contract here, I know it's only a small one, but it's a story of my life. It says I'm the presenter only. All right. That's not fair, that. But this will surprise you. The Sunday people here, right, have been doing an investigation into the, into the scandal of unregistered old people's homes. Uh, apparently, there's hundreds of them springing up all over the place, so I've nothing but the bar, but, but bar the car. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> happened to me once during the war. It was an air raid ward, his name was Sidney. I used to do anything to make him speak to me. Even made holes in me back. <laughs> and the hot air hotch up your feet. Well, I haven't got wax in my ears. You won't check some for you, so you didn't have three dents, you know. Good old Sonny Snod Oyster. The scene is a dark and desolate alleyway. Detective Inspector Trotter is called from the yard, and there is a body. The only clue to the murderer's identity is a used and discarded hypodemic nurdle. <laughs> <laughs> I told you no homework. Why are you watching the television? It should be the other way around, really, shouldn't it? I'm going to do it again. Detective Inspector Trotter is called from the yard to find out who killed the young man. The only clue to the murderer's identity is a used and discarded hypodemic nurdle. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with being a grave digger? <laughs> a grave digger? A digger of graves? It would have been so much simpler if... Now listen very carefully here Somebody to what Tim Healy says and next. Oh, aye, 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 it's not just a case of digging graves, you know. I've got morns to low, I've got flowers to plant, I've got plants to sweep, I've got trees to wear through. <laughs> it's your line, stop up the beef. Check back on that, you'll find. <laughs> He's got morns to low. <laughs> I've got morns to low, you said. Morns to low. To this day, Tim Healy still doesn't realise what he said. I'm going to move on now because I think I've just seen a lady who just gave our studio audience, and I'm sure you people at home, a lot to laugh at. Let's meet her, and I'm sure she won't mind. We'll go across and meet Helen Lloyd. <laughs> Hypoderm hyperderm hyperdermic needle. That's right, thank Don't you. Don't say much. it for us once. Hypodemic nurdle. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hyper Hypodermic needle. That's it. Oh, oh good, that's thank you. Nice, and thanks very much for coming. Pleasure. And who's this fine young fellow? This is my husband. Yes, and on a very ben famous Roberts. face as well, Ben. Thank you for coming. Right, we love the programme. She it talks is... like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank she you very much. much. Little what? souvenir of their visit here. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, Ben, what we'd like you to do with this... <laughs> You can, you, can, you can take it home and have a little bit of fun with that, if you like. She's take it with used her. to this guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> take it... Uh, it won't go in again now, will it? <laughs> no, I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of it so far? Super! Yeah. Yeah. Magic! Great! Just a minute. Who's all mine? Yes, I thought it was. <laughs> Excuse me, I've always wanted to say this. Can I have a pee, please, Bob? Jim, you have a pee before you come on the programme, not halfway through it. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, it's very good. That's an impression. Look at that. Look what's left there. It seems like all the sports people have a mind like a sewer. <laughs> very good. How about that, eh? Now then, no prizes for guessing what's coming up next. C, please, Bob. We're going to go for the C. What C is a chink? Or small crack. Yes, Jason. Chinese. Ah! <laughs> I do. I do feel I must apologise to a certain section of our viewing audience. Um, no, it's not. 
What K is a Chinese ceremony of abasement? Yes, Pauline? Uh, Kumisatra? No. No, no. <laughs> uh, something quite different. <laughs> yes. All right, relax. Relax. Forms an interesting topic of conversation a little later on. You might have forgotten the fact that there are three whites and one blue on the board. And that blue points to the single player, Nicola, who is going to call the next letter. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, who is it then? <laughs> Well, you're right, you know. You are white and you're blue, aren't you? I'm very new to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> You've seen one of these before. They're just heads for idiots. Pros like us. We don't really need them. <laughs> <laughs> After years in the business, you develop an uncanny ability to remember everything you have to say word for word. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. Cheeky. Bastards. <laughs> you may recognise this lady. I think you know what the problem is. Now it's 2 a.m. at the Blue Parrot Club and I'm back where I started again. But the time... What? Oh. Yes. Hey. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> well, there you are. She swore. Never have I seen so much spit and venom put into one word and by a lady at that. I think it's fucking disgraceful. <laughs> it's Bobby George. We're asking to get 301 or more with nine darts tonight. We hope he can do it because we'll double it. Here we go. Are you ready, Bobby? Pardon, Jim? Best of order. Are you ready? Hey? Speak up. Come on in. He's pissing deaf. So for thirty pounds, Frank, which pop duo split up in 1986 and gave their farewell conference at Wembley Stadium? <laughs> farewell concert. So for thirty pounds, which pop duo split up in 1986 and gave their gave their mm, come on? <laughs> for thirty. So it's for £30, Frank. Which pop duo split up in 1986 and gave their farewell conference... A... <laughs> so it's for £30, Frank. Which pop duo split up in 1986 and gave their farewell concert at Wembley Stadium? <laughs> Shut up, you up there! <laughs> hey, listen, tell us if this is a bit now. This is lovely. Tell us about the league going. Well, we am the second of the local league show, uh, second of the British Legion league show. You exhibit your leaks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, ever exhibited your taters? <laughs> no. Because there's, there's a lot of money in it, actually, isn't there, Norman? The uh, reason I want to stay with you. You've three leaks. You've shot three leaks? Yeah. And is it the size of them? Can you just... Is it the size of them? Yeah, that's basically the size. The size? Yeah. And the shape? Yeah. That, yeah. And texture, is it to do with texture? A little bit. Do you feed them? Yeah. What do you feed them, Norm? Horses. <laughs> Not that funny, you know. I'm a cult, you know. You lot upstairs, you don't realise what a, a property you've got in me. Can, can you, little son, I'm really sick of this. It's you keep telling them up there to do it. <laughs> tell, tell them to stop it. There'll be no more of it. Go and action. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Derek Duberry appearing for the customs and exercise. Exercise. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, me. Wait a minute. Aren't you Charlie Beale's bird? Oh, I'm Gerald Beale's oh, bird. <laughs> I could have met somebody in the profession that could armatize. Ah, the This is the situation. We're all good friends and we all care about each other. And your mum has the hots for my dad. Sure enough. <laughs> no one's got the hots for anyone. Do Caroline thinks I'm a terrific woman? <laughs> <laughs>
What's behind it? I don't know. I never looked. Well, have I a look a now. Girl. I can hear something. I was a good girl. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if I spew up into your pot, will that help you get it right? <laughs> Talking about Caroline's business, he's trying to seduce it away from her. Oh, Charlie, your paranoia glands are over at excrete. Pardon? Excreting? <laughs> if you seriously believe, any of you, that I can be persuaded to endorse a scheme of such block-headed imbecility. You know it's brilliant. Propounded by a man as dementedly unstable as that. And I wring all the, or the organs, all me organs. <laughs> yeah, you've had some great laughs. And sometimes things go tragically wrong. And this is not funny. Seriously now, this is no laughing matter. What we're about to show you was a life and death situation which my Michael Elphick had to handle. It was very traumatic for him. And he was a very brave man. Can we, can we roll that, John? Get an ambulance! Get a bloody ambulance! Oh, keep still, keep still. Keep your eyes still. Keep it still. Oh, please, Michael, just once. Please, Michael, do it to me. <laughs> now, this sort of situation feels perfectly comfortable. Absolutely normal We're having a chat, talk about this and that. And we could handle this in a dramatic situation. We could probably do a scene together, couldn't we? Oh, yes. Not a problem, Miss <laughs> <Michelle. laughs> No problem. <laughs> but if I go here, <laughs> I put my arm around Tony and talk to Tony like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> now, this... this uh, <laughs> if this were in a dramatic context, it would take a bit of handling. Because it's, it is sort of unnatural, certainly to me, to be, to be in this situation. So let's see what happens when two men... Uh, you stop it. <laughs> when two men are in a dramatic situation and circumstances draw them together. <laughs> well, look, I promise you this. They're going to be the best damn two weeks that you've ever had. Dad. <laughs> Can you hear that shirt? It's nice. <laughs> it is a lovely shirt. I can't get up with this on. <laughs> I got. Uh, oh. I got my thing on and I can't get it. <laughs> well, you and I, Tom, uh, grumpy, old sods, touchy as hell. My dear friend. You can see that Leslie Phillips has dried, but the director hasn't said cut. So how do you think this scene will continue? Of course, it doesn't. <laughs> Finally, there's one area we've avoided up to now. It's something which all actors dread. Honestly, in theatre, in television, on, well, live cabaret. Any suggestions? Breaking a leg. No, it's not... not Going well, bald! That, well, no, we're there. No, is that it? No, I'll give you a clue. Here you go. Here's your clue. Any ideas? Gardening. What? <laughs> gardening. Gardening? You, what are you talking about gardening? You're almost, who let you in? You're underage anyway, for goodness sake. It's water, isn't it? And this is the first bit. This happened live, you know, on the air to the nation. Oh, hi, have you got any water? Oh, by, ch by chance, I have some bogey water. Bogey water? Guaranteed to keep you running all day, and it helps to keep your breath smelling. Oh! oh. What, like that? I should drink it now while it's still got a head of scum on it. Oh, let me have a look. Are it's you lovely. sure? It'll do you the world of good. You say so? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no!
You see, Mr. Brett has a large number of admirers, all of them female. Oh, really? Yes. And occasionally, Mrs. Brett feels he gets a bit carried away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> More than a bit, my guess. There you are, special effects going over the top again. All the glamour of it. This production is definitely rained off, but the crew don't let this dampen their spirits. Ready on rain, John. <laughs> There's someone in my house. In my house. I, I ran out. Oh, Christ, I've dried. <laughs> well, good night. It's Joe McGann again. No, not the Irishman, it's that man, Joe McGann, again. I know I've had some stick tonight, but he really is. He must come a close second in the cock-up sticks. And I've got a little something to present to Joe in recognition of all his feeble attempts at getting it right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe McGann. Ah, now, um, unfortunately, trust, trust, unfortunately, he couldn't get here tonight. So uh, but he asked me to come and, and give you this. As a little souvenir from him. <laughs> well, ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something wrong here, isn't there? Nothing in it, is there? No. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> no, Come no. on, lads. Oh, no. No, honestly, no, no, there's nothing to get worried about. Don't, oh, don't do this to me. For God's sake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, see, uh, come on. Uh, where's Joe McGann? He's not here, is he? No, he's not here. Give he's, it to me. I'll take it. You take that. Go on. Off you go. Right. Go I'm on, saying I'm on. Go for it. Go on, go, lads. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. That's nearly it. I hope you had a good time. But just when you thought it was safe to switch off, remember the pantomime horse. It was good. It got better. And it gets better still. See you soon. Open this door. Never. Open it, I say. Go away. You are coming with me. Never. You insult me. You dare insult the seventh son of a seventh son. I will not take no for an answer. Now come with me. Let me go. Come, I say. Come. 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 Come.